Welcome back to Contextual Electronics. This unit's all about the layout editor and kind of getting you acclimated to the buttons and the different features inside of it so that we can dive down into the more interesting topics of how we actually get things done, how do we actually implement designs in, in the layout program. So let's open up the KiCad launcher. And this is the button for PCB new. You see we're actually going to be using a, we're just going to have this here for reference. We're going to have a somewhat finished board. You'll see this in other, some of the other projects as well. It's just kind of easier to talk about some of the features when there's already a layout on screen. Let's open this up. All right, we have the board here. So let's, uh, you can see it's obviously not finished either. Uh, <laughs> and that's, that's actually good. Uh, let's go across the top here. So this would be a new board. Usually when you're actually launching a uh, PCB new, it's from an uh, existing layout or from an ex existing schematic. And so once you launch from another program, it actually automatically creates a board as soon as you hit save. So this button isn't used very often. Same for this button, open existing board. You're usually not going to do that if you're already inside of PCB new because you're going from the KiCad launcher. Saving, you better do that a lot. That's, that is a good thing. These are the page options for the sheets. Uh, you know, if you want to have different drawing sizes, whatever. This is something you're probably already familiar with in the KiCad course. The module editor is a, an entire section. So we go over how to build footprints there. This is how you view all the footprints if you'd like to. And then, you know, usual undo, redo, uh, print the image here. And then this print is actually plot. Uh, and plot is actually, if you look at module 7 of the KiCad course, the plotting and outputting of Gerber files is all done with this 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 feature. All your zoom fun functionality. This is your components uh, finding rather. So you can also do control F to get this menu. This is importing netlists, which is very important. DRC or design rules check. This is our list of layers and we'll go over all this in a diff all the layers in a different video. This is uh, selecting the active layers. So if you want to choose top bottom or you know maybe a second and third layer as you know in a four layer board as your active layers. Uh, this is uh, allows you to move components when you're importing them with the dot net list input import. This is auto routing in the actual mode of auto routing. And then this is actually the third party auto routing tool that you can use with KiCad. Going down the left side here, actually let's go across the top here first. Um, use track and via. This is if you're if you create a new via by hitting X then uh, you'll see that this is this is actually a six mil trace there. If we hit V, that actually is a 20 mil via. And then these are actually selectable. You can actually switch through all the different sizes of vias, sizes of tracks, and uh, that's nice for, because sometimes you want to switch between, you know, maybe a high power trace, as this one is, or just a data trace. If you really don't have much current flowing, you don't want to waste the space with a, a big, a big thick trace. You usually want to go smaller then. Grid, we've talked about many times, but this is actually for, you know, aligning. This can be important for your footprints, but there's a, you know, there's a bunch of importance of grid videos. And then zoom is here, but we usually, we do, uh, if you'll see it on, on the, uh, key launcher, or the key viewer rather, you should see uh, as I zoom in and out there should be green arrows, so you should, shouldn't need this zoom level as much. Alright, going down the left side, this is actually disabling design rule checking. We actually want to keep that on most of the time. The grid, which we've talked about, showing it or hiding it, which is actually small enough that we can't see it right now. This switches between coord uh, polar coordinates and quadrature coordinates, and right now we're um, we're, we, I hardly ever use polar coordinates, however that can be useful if you do like a circular board. Switching between uh, units here, inches and, and millimeters. This is cursor change, this is just like in the schematic program. Personally not a very big favorite of mine. This, uh, the next button down here is actually rat's nest. And these uh, traces here are actually the rat's nest. This is toggling their, their viewability here. Uh, this is for modules rat's nest. We actually don't have any of those on this board, but it does the same kind of thing, toggling on or off. This is about uh, deleting old traces. We usually uh, have this disabled. This is for viewing the power planes, or just planes in general, copper pores. Right now, uh, if you see the outline here, this was actually defined by me when I was creating this board. Uh, we can actually view this in a couple different ways. Right now, we're actually viewing it filled in. 
but then we can also go to just the outline I created and then you see kind of this hatch line here and then finally you can actually see if you go back if we go back to the filled in you see it kind of auto generates the the fill here and it and actually stays out of certain areas especially around the traces I've run on the same layer and so we the third view is to see not only the outline I created here but then all the filled in areas you see that it also creates it as almost like a second trace around those traces this is viewing uh, outline mode for the for the footprints or for uh, yeah pads so you see that the outline this is just showing outline now and you want to do that not necessarily for these very big components but sometimes for smaller components you want to be able to see you know exactly how much room you have same thing for the vias here we're going to turn that back on uh, vias we're actually showing as a solid solid unit there but sometimes you want to see inside of them because you might want to see how the uh, make sure that's all being connected and that the traces are being run properly this is actually the same thing for the outline mode for the trace here uh, let's actually see so this this is the tr the plane but this is a trace and if we turn on trace outline mode we see that it uh, changes that as well this changes the contrast of the layers so if we uh, right now we're on the top layer but if we switch over to the other layer we see that it actually has a high contrast uh, there for uh, just just making it easier to see this is showing the layer manager toolbar that's this this manager over here the far right so we can turn that on or off and then the same thing usually hidden but a microwave toolbox so we can show that on or off all right let's go down the side here so the top this is your default uh, viewer and this is what you want to switch back to normally usually if you're in a different mode so if we're in a trace mode and we're creating traces usually hitting escape twice will get you back to that this is for selecting traces and it's not as important here because we can see a lot of the traces themselves but as we go through and we want to click jeez, oh so we want to click certain traces we can highlight the entire the entire track regardless of layers and that's really useful as you get into more complex designs and you, you realize that you might want to see exactly where the trace is going and then you can click off to, in order to turn that off. This is the uh, local rat's nest. So right now we actually have all of these viewed. We can see all of these, but if we turn those off, so we remember this is how we turned them off here. Sometimes when you're zoomed way in and you want to route another trace, perhaps if you're going around a, a digital package like this, some of these aren't route routed. So you might want to turn on a local, and if you click, you should. Yep, you're able to see there's just a few. It just shows the relevant rat's nest of the ones you click. And you should be able to see how uh, those are all connected. Uh, let's see if we can find another unconnected one here. There we go. There's one. Ah, ground, of course. So, yeah, it shows all the relevant connected uh, connected layers. So we'll switch back here. All right, and turn all the rat's nest back on then. This is to place a module or a footprint, as it were. Uh, this is important because, well, okay, so first off, normally when we hit the netlist, and there's a whole video about this, but if you hit read netlist, it'll actually import a bunch of new parts. However, uh, if you want to place like a mounting hole, you actually have to do that through the adding module. You can't just add a drill hole here. You actually have to create a footprint for the drill hole first, and then you add a module here be able to click and then it'll be listed as you know maybe three millimeter drill hole or non-plated through hole or something like that so it's important to note that uh, whatever you do place with this button it actually won't be connected uh, through the schematic program because that's actually how all these rats nests are being created it's all with the net list which was generated through the schematic program EE e schema this is the uh, routing of traces so if you start clicking we can start creating traces and as I showed in past videos, if you uh, hit the V button, you can switch between switch between uh, your active layers there. This is for creating your outlines, and this is similar to what we saw here. If we right-click, we can actually remove all the filled zones. But the uh, creating the actual outline, if we wanted to create, we'll, well, I mean, we'll go through this in other videos, but uh, you actually choose which layer you want, and you start drawing shapes. This is a keep-out area. So the same kind of thing if you wanted to keep out... Uh, you know, perhaps the copper pour, you you wanted it to be everywhere except maybe one little tiny area, it'll generate everywhere except there. Uh, for board outlines, as you saw in the board outline video, hopefully, or you will, uh, you do you create 
drawings in the edge cut layer with this polygon tool. Oop, you obviously can't do that on copper, but we can do that here. We can, oh man, it did not select it. Select. So we can actually start creating shapes here. And that's useful for board outlines and everything else. We can also create board outlines with circles or arcs. And then very, very important is the, uh, let's get rid of those. Very important is the adding text on the on the layers. You can add this, you know, you wouldn't want to do it on an edge layer, but you can do it on silk screen. You can do it as a uh, solder mask relief, or you can do it in the copper. Actually, you can actually add text. Down here we have the dimensions, and we'll do that for when we're setting out for for manufacturing. Same thing here. This is for aligning your layers. This is for deleting components. This should really only be used when you're uh, create or adding components with the add modules, perhaps like mounting holes. Or if you've had, you know, if you had a, a screw up and you imported the wrong part, you can delete everything and then just uh, re-import using Netlist again. This is the origin point for the drill and then the origin point for the grid, both useful for um, both fabbing and also kind of just doing math as you want to create your board. You might know you want it, you know, maybe a hundred mils away from one another. You can help. Uh, you can help yourself by by setting setting your origin point. If you don't want to do that, as we've shown in past videos, uh, this down here is your relative, so uh, relative dimension, rather. So we know, that we can see here, this is the absolute dimension, x and y. But if we hit the space bar, it resets that relative dimension, that dx, dy. And that's useful for if you want to measure something or if you know you want to start something, you know, if you want to make something about 100 mils away. This, again, is zoom level. And then finally, the uh, this is actually a really important thing. Not necessarily, I mean, this stuff over here is interesting, the pads, vias, track segments, all that stuff. However, the unconnected nodes, when this number gets to zero, you are set. And that is really what you want to get to as you're creating your board. As as you route more traces and you, you uh, fulfill the rat's nest here, you'll see this number start to go down from 97 to 60, whatever, down to zero. So that's an important thing to note, um, and it's a very useful tool as you're creating your boards. All right, so we'll go over a lot of different features. Obviously, we didn't go over any of the menus up here. Those are all uh, we'll, separate videos. We'll definitely go over all those in a little bit. Uh, but we'll, uh, for now, hopefully you found this useful. And looking forward to the rest of the videos for the layout section of KiCad Tutorial.